Part three. Xiao Bai. Lesser Yin Si. Makes sense, right? If you look here, this is the He Si point of the Lesser Yin channel. So once again, we see a direct correlation between the point name and an association that the channel, the point has, point association. Lesser Yin Si. This is the water point, Ha Si point. With the elbow flexed, the point is in the depression between the medial end of the transverse cubital crease and the medial epicondyle of the humerus. So just flex your elbow. Find the medial end of the transverse cubital crease. Find the medial epicondyle of the humerus. And at that point in the middle, it's heart three. Once you find the point, it is often useful. You have the elbow bent to locate the medial end of the transverse cubital crease. Then once you find the midpoint location, you can extend the arm, straighten the arm, and you'll feel the point come up under, under your finger. Actions. Removes obstruction from the channel, calms the mind, and clears heat. Cardiac pain. Spasmodic pain and numbness of the hand and arm, tremor of the hand, pain of the axilla and hypochondriac region, and scrofula. Heart 7. Shenmen, spirit gate. This is the earth point. Sedation point, right, because it can draw from fire. As a matter of fact, if you see flushing due to heat in the body, or in the, you know you see heat in the face right via flushing, this would be a good point to work because it can help draw some of that heat out. Remember that the heart channel of Han Xia Yin belongs to the sovereign fire of the body, and as such, it can be used for hot conditions. Right, the whole channel, but as the uh, earth point and the sedation point on the fire channel, heart seven can be used. The location is at the ulnar end of the transverse wrist crease in the depression on the radial side of the muscle flexor carpi ulnaris. Couldn't really find a great picture for you, so we'll have to locate this one in class. but at the ulnar end of the transverse wrist crease in the depression on the radial side of the muscle flexor carpi ulnaris in the area of the pisiform. Action. Calms the mind, nourishes heart blood, and opens the orifices. Let's see how that relates to the indications. Cardiac pain, irritability, palpitation, which can be related to a deficiency of heart blood, as can insomnia, mania, hysteria. All right, so those are all relating to nourishing the blood. Epilepsy can also be related to calming the mind, as can mania, insomnia, hysteria. Right. Pain of the hot pain of the hypochondriac region, hot palm, and yellow sclera. Yellow being a sign of heat. If we look at the explanation of the name Shen Men, Spirit Gate, we see that according to Andrew Ellis and Nigel Weissman, in their book, Grasping the Wind, the point is good for treating disorders of the spirit. And as an acupoint, it can be considered a gate into the body to produce this result. So Shenmen, spirit gate. And we see a lot of gates and doors as point names because the, all the points are gates and doors. Heart nine, Shao Chong, lesser yin rushing. This is our Jingwell point. 
It's a wood point on the heart channel, so it could also be a tonification point. And it is the exit point. On the radial side of the little finger, one-tenth of a sun proximal to the corner of the nail. It clears heat, subdues wind, opens the heart orifice, relieves fullness, restores consciousness. Indicated for palpitations, cardiac pain, pain in the chest and hypochondriac regions, mania, febrile disease, loss of consciousness. Let us move on to the small intestine channel of hand Tai Yong. And as we pass, we can see Tai Yong covers the posterior surface of the body, right, top of the head, small portion of the forehead. The channel begins on the ulnar side of the tip of the little finger at small intestine one. It moves up the ulnar side of the hand to the wrist, ulna to the medial aspect of the elbow, where it passes between the olecranon of the ulna and the medial epicondyle of the humerus, at small intestine eight, runs along the posterior aspect of the upper arm, intersecting with the large intestine channel, at large intestine 14, to the posterior aspect of the shoulder, small intestine 10, zigzags from the inferior fossa to the superior fossa. So we go small intestine 10, 11 in the, sup in the infraspinatus fossa, right below the spine of the scapula, and then moves above to the area above the spine of the scapula, small intestine 12. Then it moves just off the spine of the scapula, the small intestine 13, and then crosses, traverses the upper back to meet with the other yang channels. Where? Say it with me. Do 14 at the lower border of the seventh cervical vertebrae. It then moves anteriorly, crosses through stomach 12 because all of the yang channels except the urinary bladder channel pass through stomach 12. And descends into the, ab into the thoracic cavity, connects with the heart, moves down along the esophagus, connects with the conception vessel, the wren, and passes through the diaphragm to the stomach and enters the small intestine. A branch ascends from the supraclavicular fossa from the area of stomach 12, crosses the neck and cheek to the outer canthus of the eye, where it meets the gallbladder channel, and then travels posteriorly towards the ear where it intersects with the gallbladder channel and the San Jiao channel and enters the ear at small intestine 19. So we have 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The channel moves up to meet with the other Yang channels at do 14 beneath the spinous process of the seventh cervi cervical vertebrae, moves anteriorly. A branch descends, right, connects with the conception vessel, the heart, the stomach, and the small intestine. Another branch ascends, and we have small intestine 16, 
17, 18, moves up to the outer canthus and connects with the gallbladder channel, moves posteriorly to the ear, connects again with the gallbladder channel and the San Jiao channel, then descends to enter the ear at small intestine 19. Another branch leaves the primary channel at the, on the cheek by small intestine 18 and ascends to the infraorbital region. And then along the lateral aspect of nose to the inner canthus where it meets with the bladder channel. And yet another branch descends from this, this is a deep branch from the small intestine to stomach 39, Sha Jushu, which is the lower Hussey point of the small intestine. So we have primary channel and three branches, basically, right? Primary channel begins on the lateral aspect or the ulnar side of the little finger moves up the ulna side of the hand, moves through the wrist, follows the ulna, passes between the olecranon process and the medial epicondyle, follows the posterior aspect of the upper arm, swings slightly anterior to meet with the large intestine channel, and then posterior again, zigzags across the the upper back, small intestine 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, right? Runs deep to do 14, moves anteriorly, enters through stomach 12 into the thoracic cavity where it connects with the heart connects with the conception vessel at REN 17, right? Comes down to the diaphragm, connects with the stomach, and intersects with the conception vessel again and connects with the small intestine. We have a branch that moves up from this supraclavicular fossa, crossing the neck to just behind the mandible, traversing the cheek, the outer canthus, the outer corner of the eye, moving posterior, posteriorly to enter the ear at small intestine 19. Another branch leaves the channel at the cheek, moves to the infraorbital area of the eye, moves up the lateral aspect of the nose to connect with urinary bladder 1 at the inner corner or inner canthus of the eye. And yet another branch separates from the channel, moves down the anterior medial aspect, the lower extremity, and connects to the lower hissy point of the small intestine, which is Sha Ju Shu, stomach 39.